Judy Stiles, thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, the city of Joplin's preparing for an election in April for city council members, and a lot of work goes on behind the scenes beforehand, and a lot of people right now are looking at whether or not they're going to run. Joining me today is Barbara Hoagland, the Joplin city clerk, and you are right at the heart of things when we talk <laughs> about city elections. <laughs> yes, I am. And this is a great time because right now is the time when, uh, if you're interested in running for council, this is when you come into our office and sign up, fill out the application and we provide the petitions for you to run for council. Okay. So a lot of people may not realize that as city clerk you are basically the city election official. <laughs> <laughs> yes I am, thank you. So tying this, so I thought we'd take some time today, answer some questions, let people understand the process. I mean April rolls around and suddenly you have names on the ballot but as I said months ahead of time, now's the time that people need to be thinking about whether they're going to run or not. Yes, it started uh, 10 weeks prior, uh, November 17th mm -hmm. was the official first day that you could come in and and fill out the application and pick up the petitions to run. It requires uh, 150 signatures from registered voters within the city limits of Joplin and we have uh, five positions this year. Oh. A little unusual uh, this year and I'll explain. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, a zone two position which is in the heart of the city. We have a zone three position which is also on the other side in the heart of the city. Then we have two general seats open. Okay. Um, now these are four-year seats and then we have a general seat which is a two-year position mm -hmm. that is filling the remainder seat of a uh, council person that uh, resigned earlier this year. So we have three general seats and then the zone two seat and the zone three seat. So we have five Five, names, positions. five positions on the ballot, so that's going to be when the majority of the council then, when you're talking <laughs> yes. about the nine members on the council. Well, let's explain some of the procedures, and you mentioned zones for Joplin residents. Uh, they may not realize, you know, they see us here, they're in a certain number of a zone, how the city is divided or split up. We have a map behind us. I believe they have a map on the computer as well. Let's explain the geographic zones when we're talking about for Okay, the city. our city is divided up into the four zones that you see here, mm -hmm. and uh, on for viewing purposes, you see the yellow, that is uh, zone two, and the the green uh, represents zone three, and I said they're you know kind of in the heart of right. the city there. The pink up above uh, is or red is uh, zone one, and the blue down below uh, in the south is zone four. Uh, zone one is represented by Mr. Shaw, Gary Shaw. Mm -hmm. uh, the blue down below is represented by our mayor, Mike Seibert. Uh, the yellow is represented by uh, Melody Cobert King, Zone 2, and Zone 3 is represented right now by uh, Dr. Benjamin Rosenberg. Okay, so those are people who have specific zones they're representing. Mm -hmm. and then you mentioned general seats, so okay. how does that tie into Well, it? let me back up just a moment. Okay. I say they're represented by them, but uh, all nine council members, you can talk to any of them okay. when you want to so ask So you don't have to call your zone you representative do, for anything. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's probably the most misled um, uh, question uh, when they call and they say we want to talk to our council person uh, we tell them sure we'll give you that number but we also want you to know that you can speak to any of them uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, they kind of still want to talk to their council <laughs> the, person, the, the person in their they, neighborhood they, right? you know, <laughs> they think they, they want to talk to their council person but we always say you can talk to any of them so we end up giving them you know a couple of numbers two or three numbers you know and in fact these people are elected citywide as well it's that, not just zone two voting for zone two that's a very good question Judy um, yes when you live in the city you vote vote for all. Okay. You vote for every one of them, whether they live in general or live in the zone or not. You vote. You are voting for every one of them. Okay, so you said you had three general seats. Yes. So explain how, what, what a general seat involves. Okay, okay, well the general seat, and when you are seeking a nomination by petitions, you get your 150 signatures from mm -hmm. anywhere within the city. Oh, throughout all town. Mm -hmm. Throughout, yes, throughout the entire city. Now, when you are seeking your petitions within the zone, half of your 150 signatures come, uh, 75 have, need to come from within that zone. So those are the people who will canvass their neighborhood, talk to their neighbors, mm -hmm. and get the people that That know. is correct. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's part of the process. I will start off with step one. Somebody decides they're going to run. November 17th, they were able to walk into your office and say, I want to run for city council. That How do they correct. start that process? Then? Well, there's two qualifications. First of all, you uh, show us your voter ID card mm -hmm. and your driver's license. So you must be a registered voter. <laughs> That's right. And then you have to have lived in the city the immediate prior four years okay. before running. Those are the only two qualifications. So there's no age limit. There's nothing For being like a registered that. voter, you uh, assume mm -hmm. you're 18. 18. Right, right. And so then, uh, then we uh, have you fill out the rest of the application, a simple application, and um, and then we ask you um, what 
uh, you want to uh, run for. And if it's a zone, we make sure that um, that before April comes, you're going to have lived in that zone. You have to check the residency usually, of that zone. Right. Mm-hmm. And usually they already are living in that zone. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then we give them their petitions, and then we, of course, say good luck, and off they go, and okay. they're out running. Uh, so... Um, and then we also encourage them, we tell them about the petitions that, uh, because at the bottom of the petition, and I just happen to have brought some petitions. A little petition, samples of the petitions. A little mm-hmm. sample here, that this is what it is. That if you, uh, at the bottom, you'll see the sign where it says circulator. Mm-hmm. That person, you can have a registered voter help you circulate those petitions. Okay. And that means that that person physically saw anybody uh, fill out that form and it's just their signature and that they are a registered voter of the city and that person went to that door or who, wherever they were and that they saw that person sign that form and print their name on that form. So it's a witness type of thing. I, I Abs- witnessed these people sign it for us. Absolutely. And then we tell them that they don't really, uh, they can turn that form in. They don't have to wait till they get all their signatures. Okay. And we always encourage them to get more than 150 because mm-hmm. some of them might say they're a registered voter and they're really not a registered voter. So that has right. happened more than once. I've done this job a long time. <laughs> I've pretty much seen everything. And um, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, we tell them to turn their pages in, you know, as soon as they can, because the sooner they turn them in, then uh, the sooner they can uh, become uh, certified to, for the ballot. So the items you're asking when someone is asked to sign a petition is what precinct they live in, mm-hmm. and then of course the date, the signature, their street address, and then print mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. those are the items that you then use to go back and check the voter registration rolls. absolutely right. And we check with the uh, county clerk's office, and they pull it right up, and then they check the signature, and um, if they're eligible, then, uh, then we go from there. Mm-hmm. Now when people are circulating these, I mean, they can go to civic clubs, they can go door to door, there's mm-hmm. no real restrictions on how you can go out and knock well, at these gatherings? the only thing is they cannot leave them at a place of business or uh, on a desk or at a restaurant okay. or anywhere like that. They physically have to have that in their hands circulating that mm-hmm. petition. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the person who's going to be the candidate, but it could be family members uh-huh. or friends who are representing them. As long as they're they registered voter. Right. Mm-hmm. So, this, so as people are this time, as we're recording this program, they might be meeting some of their neighbors <laughs> passing these out. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So we've 150 signatures, that could be, you know, a challenge, but you say you want a few more because some of them may not be. Somebody might not and, be and registered or they might not and have. And the thing also I want to stress is uh, it says printed name. Mm-hmm. We've got to be able, and the county clerk's office has to be able to read that so clear, legibly. Clearly, yeah. It's very critical that we're mm-hmm. able to read it because they're not going to spend a lot of time on one name. Right. They do spend time and they really try to help us out to read that name, but they're not going to spend 10 or 15 minutes on one person. So it's very critical. And we stress this mm-hmm. to uh, the persons interested to please make sure those names are right. And something else we have found out that make sure you use your name that you registered to vote. Just because just because you registered as, as Connie Sue, you might be going by Mary now. <laughs> right. So what, Use your name that you registered. <laughs> when, <laughs> and, and, you know, that might have been 40 or 50 years. <laughs> so check your voter ID card, and maybe. <laughs> you know. That's already happened. So. <laughs> so make sure you people change names and they do. To, they uh, go by another name. Another but, name. But what's in the computer files is exactly and. They might be registered voter, but they might be signing their name as something else now. So, so we need to double check on that. So they're doing that now. Uh, what is the deadline for getting these back to you then? Well, they have to be turned in to me, whether they pick up petitions that day they turn them in or the final day to uh, council petitions that are available is uh, January 12th. That is okay. the final day they mm-hmm. can turn in petitions and pick them up, too. And I've seen that happen, The too. last day they're grabbing some and going back out. <laughs> <laughs> Five o'clock. 5 p.m. The doors are locked, mm-hmm. and that's the final day. So that's when. You and then I have two weeks to certify the ballot to mm-hmm. both county clerk because you know we live in two counties. Right. This, when you look at the map, you have 32nd Street running right. right down the middle of that map. So. Jasper and Newton County. I have to get the ballot to them before. Uh, that's my final day at mm-hmm. uh, five o'clock, and I don't want to wait. <laughs> now, some people maybe when they're signing this, they'll look at this and they'll say, "What's my precinct? Well, what does a voter do when they're asked to sign it?" And they say, "I'm not sure what my precinct is." And you know, we don't really hold them to that. Mm-hmm. It would help us out if we had that. Okay. But 
the county clerk's office can pull that up on the computer. It does say to have your precinct on there, but mm -hmm. we're not real sticklers about that. We're pretty lenient. And that's on, on that. your voter ID card as and well. And that is on your voter ID and card. And it's also on your map. I mean, the maps uh -huh. have numbers uh -huh. as well, so they right. can look where they live and look at the numbers that right. correspond with that. Yeah, we won't throw your name out just because you don't Did have the your precinct. precinct. <laughs> All right. So the process is underway. They have, you, then you basically have a two week turnaround. You're spending a lot of time going through yes. a lot of paperwork and verifying yes, things. Yes, we are, especially if we have a lot of candidates. Mm -hmm. Yes. Early on, you know, just a f short time after people have been able to pick them up, are you seeing early interest in running for campaign? We've already had, uh, to this date right now, we've had six people, mm -hmm. and um, we've had um, uh, interest to this date, and uh, this is a good thing, and we're right. happy, and uh, we, uh, we deal with what we have, and, uh, and we encourage anyone interested to come to our office. That is one thing you have to do. You have to come to our office because you have to sign the application. It has to be in person. Walk yes, in and visit that is you. something. That's something you can't do online. You can mm -hmm. look online at the website and, and uh, see this. We also have this book, mm -hmm. uh, Guideline Information, right. and, uh, and it's also on the website. And so is the map and any information. And one thing we do is uh, we give you a little packet. There's new election laws this year, mm -hmm. some election laws that just came out oh. in late September from the Missouri Ethics Commission. And that's one thing I really encourage people to do is go to the MissouriEthicsCommission.com on the website because there are some new election laws out and that's one thing I really encourage people to do. It's not something that my office takes care of. It's through the Missouri Ethics Commission. So it's a statewide ruling for all mm -hmm. people who are seeking offices. And one more question on the petition. If somebody might be curious, if I sign a petition for John Doe and Jane Smith comes up, can I sign more than one petition? No, you cannot. Okay. I mean, people might say. <laughs> you you know. want to ruffle my feathers? <laughs> and let me share something How with do you, you compare that, you know, Jane well, Doe signed you? <laughs> you know, I want to tell you something. Uh, I don't have to worry about that because the county clerk's office is so good. Uh, they actually uh, have caught before. Uh, they turn the petition upside down and they and um, they see the swirls that are same and they mm -hmm. will uh, they will call me and they will tell me that they're gonna strike through and they're gonna throw it out and I can't say one thing about it because they are actually the election officials so they're the ones who are really verified they will them. initial it and um, I can't say a word about it because mm -hmm. they are the actual verifiers and I just have to say okay thank you for letting me know and right. those they strike through the line and they initial it. So and you'll get that sheet back with some names crossed off saying, can't use these. <laughs> it is the county clerks themselves. Mm -hmm. I I'd Let them handle that part of it. So <laughs> if you have more than one friend running for city council, you better just sign them for one person and, and say, you sorry, know, I've And it's done. actually in 1304 in the nominating petition. You cannot sign more than the number of seats running. So we have actually two general that are mm -hmm. four years. So you can't sign yourself more than the two general. And then we have the general two years right, that term. Works, but, so you couldn't sign more than the two year, one two year. So okay. do you follow me on mm -hmm. that? And my assistant will, bless her heart, <laughs> she puts in a database when the sheets come in after they're all checked, she runs a database for every, as they come in order, because they're mm -hmm. numbered by our office. Okay. And she puts them in by the, because they're checked in number order by the, by the way they come in. Mm -hmm. and. She puts it in the database and they're time stamped too. Right. And this is critical because after they're checked, this is how you will go on the ballot, who gets theirs in first. And she runs a database. So if you're in Excel, so if your name goes in and it says, and say you're running and it says Judy Stiles and then Judy Stiles again, well after two on general, the third Judy Stiles wouldn't get checked that one out. Yeah. because <laughs> it, it, you can't sign more than two. Mm -hmm. So that just lets us know and she will type in every name on oh. every petition and she will work over to make sure that they are they will be checked and mm -hmm. rechecked so that's how we and she's so, done it every two years so people <laughs> don't realize all this work that goes on behind the scenes that's before you exactly. even have those names <laughs> and on then the i have to and then i i 
I will check, but I shouldn't have to check her work, and I, mm -hmm. I don't, but I do, and uh, because my name's the final name on the, <laughs> on the signature line. <laughs> but she does her job extremely well, and um, and it, there is a lot of work, like you say. Mm -hmm. You know, this is behind the scenes stuff that people just don't know about. Right. Kind of the really nitty gritty details that are involved. Yes. So, the people who you see on the ballot then are the names that are listed are in the order basically of which they've completed those 150 right. verified names back to your office. And that's why they rush out to get those names. They think mm -hmm. being first on the ballot is going to give them some extra votes. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen it both ways. I've seen everything. You know, the people so. wait to the last minute so they can be the last on the yeah. ballot. <laughs> and, and you know and then they'll and then they'll campaign vote for me my name's last on the you know I've seen it advertised mm -hmm. every way. So know. there's no alphabetical order or anything like that it's no. just as you receive them. And That's them right. Away. That's so exactly right. right. And of course you just now having people pick them up they can wait until first of January to pick up petitions hurry up and get them signed and, to get them back to you. Right but you know there's an advantage and disadvantage because if they've already if some people have already signed on general mm -hmm. two petitions then you're running short of people You're for running signing. Short of, yeah, unless you've got a uh, unless you've got a campaign base of other people, mm -hmm. you know. So. so has this 150 been a standard throughout the years? Yes. So it's a, oh, since Charter so of 1954. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if it's based on population. <laughs> you know, because Joplin obviously has grown over the no, years. No, <laughs> it's it, that charter was made back in 1954 and about those nominating petitions, they were standard back then. Great, so carrying through that tradition. Now you mentioned the website, and I have a copy, of, a printed copy of what you have on the website, but I want to talk a little bit about the guidelines and procedures. People don't realize that once you go through this process of applying, you know, doing your, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, you know, code of ethics, rules oh. about, you know, uh, <laughs> what, to, I mean, I'm flipping through here, disclosure and things Ooh, like that. So yeah. for a candidate, you have to become educated. You need to know what you're getting into. <laughs> you know what I like to tell them, and I, and I usually tell them, I, I don't know if I've told everybody this or not, but I, I have our new person. I said, uh, you know, I, I used to have a fishbowl in my office, and I said, <laughs> I said, uh, you know, what you put on this application, uh, it's like living in a fishbowl. Uh, <laughs> it becomes news at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, if they call, I will tell them this. And one person, I, I don't even know who it was, and it doesn't matter, but he said, well, I, I've already called my mother because he said... <laughs> He said, I've told my mother, I think I'm going to do this today. <laughs> <laughs> so mom wouldn't find about it on the news, right? <laughs> and, uh, but I did. I used to have a fishbowl in the office, and I said, it's like living in this fishbowl, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know and, and, you know, if you put your eyes up and your face up to a fishbowl, you know how it expands. And, mm -hmm. and I said, it's just like living in a fishbowl, you know. Everything you do is... No, is known by six o'clock, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like tying your your uh, shoes in in a knot. I said it goes around the world before any, anybody else knows it, but it's it's kind of funny because uh, I I did say, and so he he scribbled out something, and he said, well, I better use this number instead of that number. He said, my wife might really be mad if I put her number down. <laughs> <laughs> so contact information and everything. Absolutely, absolutely. But a lot of things in here that you know talk about. I guess as you transition then from a private individual to a public uh, person uh, you know, and the rules that go with as I said like ethics and there's a section on gifts and confidential information conflicts of interest the only thing that you can receive is is food mm -hmm. uh, absolutely you cannot receive gifts you just you just cannot you know this job is a volunteer job mm -hmm. you know they get five dollars and I don't think, I think it's five dollars you know, per had, meeting <laughs> I've had people call me and know how much they get paid you know and I go mm -hmm. pay <laughs> I said, if you want to know how much you get paid, it's twenty-seven dollars and something a quarter. It's five dollars a council meeting. Now, granted, there's other cities, even in the state, that really get paid. They pay their people. But right? this is a glorified volunteer job. And if you realized how much driving they did, especially at the beginning of the month, for these zoning issues, they really, and especially how gas was ex expensive, really yeah. expensive, they're they're taken out of their own heart that to go out and look at yeah. that five dollars is gone before you get out of your driveway. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a gift. So it that's really all is. spelled out in here, so people Absolutely. know up front what's happening. Absolutely. And of course, rules about the actual campaign, uh, political signs. A lot of people wonder, you know, what and, can I put up for signs and campaigning? And, so and, and you know, and that's a that's that's an excellent that's an excellent rule. You know, and, they, and they've got to pay for this too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's, they've got to be 15 feet back from the curb, and they can't be higher than 8 feet, you know, and that's if they make the big signs, you know. Right. And it used to be, um, and we never had an ordinance, uh, because years ago we had this uh, planning and zoning director that never, it was never an issue, you know. It, 
it had just it never has been an issue. And people are so good to remove their signs after. after, after but washing. you've got to be really careful who you give your signs to because you don't know where they're going to put the signs. So your supporters they've need to be got, educated. They've got to stay out of those right of ways. They've mm -hmm. got to stay out of the parks. And uh, you've just got to really, really be careful. But then if the wind blows them and they blow somewhere, and I will tell you this, um, our code enforcement people are very careful. They will not pick up your signs. And if they do pick them up, they would take them over to uh, the uh, parks and take them over to the street department. Mm. They will never get rid of them and mm -hmm. they will never throw them away. You know, you can get your signs recovered. You'll find and them afterwards if they were to yes, blow away in a windstorm. And time we would it. never destroy the signs. We have had to call a few not council candidates, but we had had to call some other political people mm -hmm. and tell them uh, that their signs were not the right size. So it's very clear in this book on signs mm -hmm. exactly what your sign sh size should be. Now you mentioned it costs, so there's also financial aspects of running for an office and disclosure and where your campaign finance mm -hmm. basically. For and second. that's all, with, and it, our office has nothing to do with that. There mm -hmm. again, it's the Missouri Ethics Commission right. and campaign closure disclosure that you have to fill out if you spend an X amount of dollars and uh, and that is something and then you have to close your fund open your fund and that and that is taken care of through their office okay. that you have to talk to them mm -hmm. and um, and go through the county and I that's something that I'm grateful that I don't have to take care of that. Just go up the next level of government to help reinforce those and watch Absolutely. those rules. Absolutely. So we have the process. Uh, we look at getting the petitions. We get them approved. Then after the 26th of January, they would be official candidates for that April election. Go for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have they a, are on their <laughs> own. They're on their own for getting the campaigns yes. going. Now there is one thing. Uh, Ten weeks prior to, uh, they can. Uh, there's a withdraw mm -hmm. if they wanted to withdraw. It's ten weeks before the uh, April 5th uh, election oh, okay. if they wanted to withdraw, but usually by then uh, they know if they're uh, going to withdraw. And if it's uh, after that, their name's still going to be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. They just but you have to coordinate to. with the county and printing those ballots yeah. and getting and things that, prepared. You know, once their name is out there after January 12th, they go into ballot mode and the company's up in Springfield and the county clerks already send that information out and those ballots are pretty much in the printing because they have to print so many. Well, let's talk about the other side, the voting aspect for the citizens. Uh, you say we're printing so many ballots, but the absentee voting. How early can someone, you know, it's an April election, what, you know, well, somebody can say, I won't be here in April, how soon can I go vote absentee? Well, that is something that the county clerks take care okay. of. And, uh, you know, they're pretty, I will say this, they are pretty strict about that. You mm -hmm. have to contact the county clerk's office okay. and let them know. And you have to mark a reason as to why uh, that you want to fill out an absentee ballot and then they take care of that. Okay. But there again, uh, you know, they have to do the process of putting all those boxes together mm -hmm. and we have 26 in both counties and they do a great job of taking care of it and it's getting better and better and better every election. And I, I love this process. Uh, I know it's going to be um, uh, big. There's, I think, I have heard that there's probably a couple of other issues in in the county, mm -hmm. uh, so it's probably it's probably going to be a high. Um, I High turnout for people to come. A absolutely, especially mm -hmm. with council too. But uh, we will definitely not be the only thing on the April ballot. But um, but but anyway, um, they they have to have the same number of uh, poll workers. Mm -hmm. You know whether the turnout's light or, or heavy, right. and the same number of ballots. So. Uh, so I look forward to, um, I, I actually just receive the election results. I don't work it, mm -hmm. but I do drive around and make sure everything's working well, you know. Checking and, the different precincts and the Right, places. and make sure there's no electioneering, you know, mm -hmm. and, and everything's working fine. And, and I have never seen, you know, any problems whatsoever. Everything just runs smooth. We have great uh, workers and uh, lots of room and everything. And I just think our counties do a great job at the polls. So if people have questions about voting or registering, they can check the county offices and find out what's right. the deadline for registering. Where do I go to vote? Mm -hmm. You know, if I've just moved to town, where's my polling place? And right, and that number is 417-625-4307. Okay. 
to the county, the counties and they can mm -hmm. help you out along those lines. So busy time for you every couple of years, I really, you, in Joplin's elections, you seems as a two year cycle really uh -huh. for you. Yes, it is, it's two years. It's, um, it's uh, every other year, thank goodness it's not every year. <laughs> <laughs> we would love it though, we would deal with it, but mm -hmm. yes, it's, uh, it's even numbered years. Okay. And this year, uh, it's uh, well. It's five years because we have that uh, we have that additional general, and then next uh, in two years it will be five. Okay. It'll be three general, mm -hmm. and uh, the other two it'll be uh, zone one and zone four. So uh, they trade off, and uh, we look forward to a great election. Right. And for people who may not realize the Joplin City Council, it's anyone throughout the city can vote for any of the zones, like you mentioned That's earlier. That's right. And. They Some vote for everybody. And, you know, we have a hard time uh, uh, getting through to everybody, but everybody votes for all so the So you seats. can say who you'd like to see in Zone 2, you'd <laughs> on the other side of town or whatever, and vote that right, together. That's right, that's right. And then the city council, then another question people often ask, the city council then chooses the mayor. The mayor's not elected well, by the Well, you know, and I want to tell you something about that. Right after we have the uh, election on Tuesday, April 5th, then we will turn around. And, you know, and, and some of them may not know, uh, you know, of course, nobody's going to know who's elected, but then they meet for the very first time and by charter they will meet that very next Monday mm -hmm. okay so six days later they're having a meeting <laughs> they have to mm -hmm. and they will elect among themselves one of them to be the mayor now it can, now it could be again Mike Seibert mm -hmm. because he will not have finished his term right. and he's only been a mayor once so it could be him or it could be Gary Shaw again mm -hmm. because see he's, he's been not a mayor once right. and and he can serve because you can serve a mayor twice two mm -hmm. two year terms okay? okay or it could be any of those uh, others or any of them may, maybe somebody that just got elected mm -hmm. and so they have to among um, among themselves they have to choose uh, one of them to serve for two years as mayor <laughs> can you believe it that you've just been picture this I've just been elected to the Joplin City Council and now I could be mayor <laughs> <laughs> or it could be you know if Melody got elected again mm -hmm. it could be Melody mayor again because she was just one mayor mm -hmm. see so you see the scenario here so I so say say I was getting elected and and I could be your mayor or your mayor pro tip and they've got a you know yeah, get a the mayor second pro in charge too. right <laughs> so, so how funny is so that? it doesn't stop after April 5th it continues from there the, and so the then council. we immediately elect among the nine of them sitting up here on the council and then you're 35 feet away sitting at the at, sitting in the in the chamber mm -hmm. and that you know that's something else I hear that from uh, everybody that's so, you know, we're 35 feet away, you know, they're watching. <laughs> so that'll be a very big night. Yeah, you know. to see this transition of government in a the city. Absolutely, the absolutely. So. Well, if someone has questions, go call you, come by City oh, Hall. Absolutely, come to our office, we're open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, except, you know, this is a holiday weekend, but come to our office 8 to 5 and, uh, or call us. We will answer any question. Um, if you have a computer, email us, uh, send us a, but give us a call we do not we do not have a robo uh, calling system we mm -hmm. are live you're going to answer the Joplin phone City yeah. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i want to say <laughs> we'll find you in person well barbara i'd like to thank you very much for visiting with us oh, today okay. and sharing information about the elections <laughs> thank you and i'd like to thank you the viewers for joining us this week on newsmakers i'm judy styles hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station we'll see you then